Hello everyone, it's Kay here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Hello to my new subscribers. I'm thrilled to see that I have some new ladies following me, which is always wonderful and I thank you very much indeed. Um, I just wanted to come on today. This isn't particularly a tutorial as such, but what it is, is a little something that you might like to have a little go at, inspired by Danielle Rose. Um, Danny did cards and envelopes oh, a long, long time ago. I think the original video actually is gone and I so fell in love with them, I decided that they would be my standby card for putting into racks and that kind of thing. And also, I've been watching a lot of Gail Ag Agostinelli. And I know there's so much journaling stuff out there, it's, it's unbelievable. And for ordinary people that perhaps like some of the things that are done but wouldn't want to get into journaling or that kind of thing, I've, I believe, done something that might just make you feel that you would like to have a go at snippets and that kind of thing. So if I show you one of the cards that I've made, this is how they look when they're in the envelope. And I'm going to show you how to do the envelope and the cards. It's, it's very, very straightforward. Um, and they are just such a lovely, lovely size. They really, really are. And what I've made are inspirational snippet cards. Now you might think, oh my gosh, you want to go through all the bother of that. But it's a great stash buster. They are inspirational and have, you know, nice words in them and that kind of thing. I've aligned the card so that you've got a nice little area to... Uh, make a little note on, taking a little nibble of a heart shape out in the corner there just to keep it all lovely and it just sits in that envelope cheap, cheap and cheerful to post clearly because it's flat, it's not a bit dimensional well not enough for it to I think alter the price of, of postage and that is what I'm going to show you how to do. Now it's not directed at hardened journal makers or snippet makers or anything of that nature. Maybe more the card maker who would like to use snippets and that kind of thing and I am by no means an authority on it. So I think what we'll do is start with the cards and what you need at the outset is some nice quality card. It doesn't have to be um, hugely expensive, a hugely expensive one with a massive GSM. These are 200 GSM I think. It's American card stock and you need a piece of card that is five inches by six. So you get this lovely little oblong effect. I'm not going to go through all that. Most of you card makers know what you're doing with regard to um, cutting up your card stock and getting it to be the shape and size that you want it to be. You then crease having scored at two and a half inches. So it's a five inch width and an eight inch length. Is it eight inches? No, beg your pardon. A five inch width and a six inch length. And you do that at the outset for as many cards as you feel you would like to make or need to make or have time to make. It's as, as simple and as basic as that. Now I have pre-scored these but I've not actually burnished them. And I don't think I've done a hugely great job of, of scoring. But two, I won't make all four with you today. You don't need to see all of that. But this is the basics of making your card base. Clearly, you could use any size at all. But for the purposes of using up paper or cloth snippets, it's nice to have that length to um, 
place your little snippet on. So that's those four. You can see I've rounded the corners. That's not mandatory, but I like that effect. If you don't have a corner rounder, then, you know, you can miss that bit out. It's not important because the great thing about this as well is you don't need a lot of tools to make this possible. For your envelope, you need, and I've just used copier paper here, a piece of paper, card, whatever you like, um, that is eight inches by six and a half. You take it to your scoreboard, long side upward, and you score at three and a quarter. And for ease, I just flip it around and score the opposite side at three and a quarter as well. You then put the short side up to the top of your scoreboard or you measure in with a ruler and pencil if that's what you have and you score at um, on the short side one and a one and a half and four and a half so you end up with that scenario in your marked card. I hope you can see it. You then go on fold and burnish as you would with any other something that you'd scored that needed to be put into the right position. I'm doing it with fingers because it's quick and easy. Where's that score gone? Okay, then you get to the two small little areas that you scored previously. Just get my scissors and all we're going to do is cut out my scissors are sticky, sorry, and then wedge a little bit on that centre panel which becomes the flap of your envelope. So you end up with that scenario at both ends. Because it's it's the same three quarter of an inch score. It doesn't matter which end is top and which end is bottom, which makes it all the more easier to deal with. And for the sake of the video, ooh, that's not very good there. I am going to use some score tape to seal this part of the envelope. And I always put the score tape onto the narrow of the score lines that we did initially. Peel the backing off just like so, fold it over, that anchors it down and already we've got our envelope tube which is marvellous. Now Danny does a lovely tutorial. She has recently gone back to making this size card for another reason and um, has got this on her channel which I'll link below. I like to put in a little, little thumb pull. I do it by eye and it's just to cut out that little bit. That then becomes the top flap of the envelope and this bottom bit I'm just going to run some ordinary glue over, flip that up like so, get rid of that splodgy bit which is a bit yucky. Okay and what I then do is put a little little bit of this score tape on that top flap because you know clearly you want to be able to anchor your envelope and close it safely and you know unless you invest in that um, sticky stuff that you can buy and, and use then you know you haven't got a means to seal the envelope any other way unless you just tuck it inside which of course you can do if you're handing over in person but if it, for the sake of going in the post clearly you would want to be able to uh, seal that envelope safely. So when you see the two together, there's the card, there's the envelope, and it just sits in there, an absolute dream. 
So that is the base of what we're working on. So I'll put that one out of the way. Oh, I didn't put in the... For the liner, you need a piece of paper. Again, unless you want to use card, it's entirely up to you. And this is a quarter of an inch shorter than the card. So it becomes four and three quarters that way by five and three quarters. And that, when it's scored or folded in half, becomes the liner for your card. And it just fits in there really, really nicely. And again, we'll pop a little bit of score tape on the back aspect of the um, card liner. Get off, it's sticking to me. Peel the backing off and then you have the opportunity to fit it centrally into that back lower aspect of your card. Just press down the tape and that gives you a lovely clear area for writing your message in so and then into the envelope with it so we'll keep that one out of the way for now now I mentioned Gail Agana Aga oh uh, Agostinelli Agostinelli I'll leave a link to Gail's <laughs> Uh, channel below as I always do when I'm um, inspired by someone and she is actually showing how to make snippets in a very very lovely lovely way using tea dyed paper but you could use book pages it is entirely entirely dependent upon what you have got to hand. I'm not suggesting by any shape or means that you open a new pack of card or paper or anything of that nature. This is using up what you've got lying around which hopefully is already empty. You pick up your scraps then from other projects that you've worked on, other paper pads that perhaps you've taken little nibbles out of here and there and those then become your little decorations oops sorry on your um, snippet paper and Gail advocates making your snippets on this big piece of paper and then chopping them down inking them doing whatever you like now if I lift this up you'll see I've used GI Care sentiments, some Artie Mays tickets, some little um, cardboard, corrugated cardboard hearts. I've made some tiny little envelopes and then just inked around, made some larger envelopes and just grabbed anything a little bit of a doily that I had left over. I've got these little strands from um, Hessian, um, uh, uh, well it's it's this, Hessian, it's, it's just a roll and I just flip out those bits like that, fold them over and then add them to the mix. And all I do, I'm going to have to work this way clearly because I need to see what I'm doing have some ink or paint or whatever you know you you like to use and I put this on my paper I'm just inking inking around very very quickly and this is uh, from a book Kate Scar Kate Scarpetta which I am listening to on audio at the moment the, the, the thing to remember with this is layers make prettiness it's as basic as that. Don't be held back by colour or whether something works or not. It's really not about overthinking what you're doing. It's about deciding that you are going to cover that piece of book paper. This is how I do it. I mean, Gail does it a different way. Everybody has got their own way of working on these. I'm trying to keep it quite low down for you so that you can see what I'm doing. I've got a couple of little butterflies that I cut out here from um, 
something else that I was working on. You decide where you think it's going to look best. Put it down, but put don't put it down with any <laughs> sincerity, I'm going to say. Just anchor it for the moment because you might feel, I, I, I start end to end like this, you might feel that you want to change it around a bit. Now I've got this lovely bit of lace here, which I will just put a little bit of ink splodge on. I'm going to really put a good bit of that down on that middle piece because pretty makes perfect and I'm going to add that. I don't care that I'm over the edge of the paper or that it's looking a little bit random. It's supposed to be. Then I've got another little pink bit here and these are all bits and pieces that I've had lying around and I've just cut them up a little bit more to make it more um, of a, a smaller area to cover. Press that down a bit. Now I've got some little envelopes that I've made here. And I'll show you how to do those again in a second. And again it's just inking a little bit of glue and you splodge it on where you think it's going to look nice. I've got a smaller envelope here. Again, I'm just going to ink around it very lightly. And then pop that on somewhere as well. You can overlap. You can make it as layered or as flat as you like. I've got a little tag here from another something that I was working on back along and I've just used up all the bits and pieces. Now I'm going to extend my my little snippet because I want it to be a bit longer bearing in mind I've got that area of my card that I need to fill up quite nicely. What else do I want? I've got half a little ticket here with a butterfly on it, which I think I've just put in there. It's already inked because I was inking stuff earlier and that just fits on there. I'm trying to keep the butterfly free, as you can see. I've got another little silly, silly bit of um, a doily. Waste not, want not. And I'm just going to pop that in under there like that. Just, It's about drawing the eye so that you've got little centre areas that people might want to... Um, that draw people, basically. I've got one of G.I. Kerr's little wordage bits here. Lovely kit, if you haven't got it. It's ideal for this kind of thing. And I just want to put that there. And the word is beauty and that just will sit in there and nestle in there quite nicely but you see where I'm going it is totally totally random you couldn't if you needed to show someone how to do this because it all depends on what they've got in front of them and what pleases their eye. So if you're happy with the way that it's going, then that's the way to do it. It's, it really is as simple and as straightforward as that. I don't believe in this snippet malarkey there is any right or wrong way to utilise what you have in your stash and put it to good use so that you haven't got a load of little things lying around driving you nuts that will probably ultimately end up in the bin because that is wasteful. Now you see I've just put those little bits of jute cordage on there. I've got a little heart here that I'm going to put over there because it's another layer. I've got a different styled heart here just in ordinary cardboard. I try not to make things too symmetrical because you want, as I say, that flow and you want your eye to just go along that little line thinking, oh yeah, look at that. Oh no, what's that bit? So that you ultimately end up with an interesting little something. Do I want to put that in there now? I'll save that for another time. Um, 
What else have I got here? I've got buttons and things that I don't really want to use. I've got little bits of paper like this with a little bit of script on it which I used on another one and it doesn't matter that it's a scabby little bit <laughs> that it's a scabby little bit like that because ultimately it's all got a little place and it works don't ask me I, I don't know I don't get it myself because there is no rhyme or reason to it. It 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 just is what it is, and it's very very lovely. You don't have to feel at all intimidated by it. Here's another little envelope. I'm just inking, splodge a bit more of the glue on, and this glue is ideal for this kind of thing. I'm going to put that at the end there. And I'm going to call that, apart from maybe putting on a little white heart, I'm going to call that one done, I think. You're allowed to call time whenever you feel like it. If you want to go on and have three pieces of paper all stuck together and make a real big row of stuff, then do it. You know, it really is about pleasing yourself and doing what makes you happy. I just think I want another little heart on that top one. I didn't put one on that one. And if you use inspirational words like inspire, create, you know, stay positive, all those kind of things, it makes a really, really lovely, lovely card. You know, the one thing I have got here which I find quite invaluable is a tear ruler. I'm just going to widen out a bit so you can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to put that down, rip it along, separate these out as best I can and again it doesn't matter that it's a little bit ropey and a little bit haphazard because it all comes good on the night. Okay, so we've got our little card here. I need something that's not got too much blue in it. Now, to me, that will fit on there really, really nicely. There are some hints of green. I've got other colours that blend in quite well. It's nice to see the little bit of ribbon, the little bits of jute that are all freestanding. I'm asking for peace for my inspirational word. Now what I have to do is tidy up my my little banner that's holding it all together. And this paper is actually quite brittle now. Some papers don't like to be um, put through the process of tea dyeing and all the rest of it or coffee dyeing. I think I'll put that on that way. You'll see that I've uncovered little bits and pieces as I'm taking this off from the snippet, but I'm not, again, concerned about it because what I want at the end of the day is just rough little areas. I'll go round once more and just ink up around to give it that really nice finished look you know it's it's I don't like that straight edge so we'll just get rid of that there like that perfect 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 I'm really happy with that and what happens is as you take it to your card make sure I've got my heart in the right place that fills it really really nicely I'm going to use Yoohoo glue to anchor it down and that's a preference thing. I'm not saying it's what you have to do. Clearly if you wanted to add buttons or beads or flat back pearls or anything of that nature to bring a bit of bling into the mix, then do it. <laughs> I feel I've said that a great deal in this little tutorial thingy. But, you know, it's what it's about. It's what makes you happy. It's about what you would like to send out to 
people that you care about, people that you're missing at the moment. It's all about what makes you happy and, you know, posting this in the post and having it land on someone's doorstep, I think, is quite a lovely thing to do. Now, I've still got those other two there, but what I wanted to do, because you know me, anybody that follows me knows that I'm a batch cooker. I wanted just to share with you some more of the cards that I've made already. Um, that still fits into that envelope we made beautifully. There's no problem with it buckling or causing any issues with postage. You can ink around the edge of your card if you want to. It is entirely up to you. So here we go. There's another one in white and that one has got Journey on it. Do you see how lovely they are? And it is really all about using up your scraps. Here's one in the craft card. Just lovely. Oops, put that one there. Another one here. This is in a paralysed card in grey, but it all comes together really nicely. You haven't, I, I don't think I would use patterned paper or patterned card. I don't think that would work for the snippets. It needs to be something relatively clean and without too much to detract from the snippet. Focus on your Goals is that one. I think I've got about 14 here altogether. I won't bore you with them all. Empowerment. These are all positive, positive words that you could send out and, and perhaps make someone feel thought about and cared about. Inspire. And you can see it's all little snippets of that's where it comes from. Snippets of this and snippets of that. Imagination. So, you know, bearing in mind that I prefer to work with paper, these can also be made with material ruffles. And then you just add a little bit of whatever grabs your fancy to cheer it up a bit. There's no holes barred, basically. I then, as you can see, just put a little stamped something on the envelope just to show that it's all meant to be. I, I do like things to look as if you've spent a bit of time on them and, you know, just gone the distance. It's, it's what makes people happy and hopefully, you know, it makes you happy too in finishing up the day knowing that you've made some very nice things either to keep in your stash or to send on to your friends or family and these all just fit in so nicely as you can see and I've got another oh my word lordy lordy one two three they're all different four Five. They're all different insofar as the inspirational word in them is different. The snippets tend to be what they are because it's it's stuff that you know you you've put together strictly for this purpose in the hope that you don't have to throw so much away. So with today's included, that's a good batch make as far as I'm concerned, and I've still of course got two more of the snippets to use and um, wow well, there we are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and then two more that will make 15 altogether so I'm not breaking any Friday the 13th suspicions or anything like that all made from those lovely little cards and envelopes so I hope that you find this interesting. I hope that it's fired you up and made you think, yep, weekend's here. I don't have too much to do as per, so I'm going to go and blitz all my supplies and make snippets and make cards. 
that would please me greatly if you do please share them it's lovely to see everyone's take on what they're doing with things that they've been inspired by on YouTube so take care everyone happy crafting stay well and look after one another bye bye for now